Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to lesson number four in our freedom unit. Um, we are working on the same essential question as we did in lesson three. How did conflict between European nations lead to tension in the 13 colonies? In lesson three, we learned about the French Indian War, the fact that the British defeated the French, the French were kicked out of North America, and the British therefore had control militarily of all of North America east of the Mississippi River. Uh, and that really lays the groundwork for today's conversation. Um, first of all, we're going to review vocabulary because that's what we always do. And as I always remind you, you have already written the vocabulary in your interactive notebooks. And so this is review. You don't need to write it, but these are the terms we are going to use in today's lesson. The first term is tyranny, the unjust or unfair use of government power, usually involving tactics of intimidation, repression, or the denial of basic rights. Boycott means to refuse to buy something for political reasons. If you're boycotting a store, it means you don't ever shop at that store. If you're boycotting a product, it means you don't buy anything made by that company. And repeal means to take back or cancel a law. The picture there talks about prohibition. We actually had a constitutional amendment that forbade alcohol consumption in the United States, and it ended in 1933. It lasted about 10 years. Uh, bet you didn't know that. So, on with the lesson. Our first less side question today is what was the aftermath of the French Indian War? We've talked about the causes of the French and Indian War. We've talked about the effects of the French and Indian War, uh, mainly that the British gained control of all of North America east of the Mississippi River, that the French peeping, peep, uh, these French speaking people in Canada were allowed to keep their language and their culture, and that basically, um, the Native Americans who sided with the French um, essentially chose the wrong side, and now they had to deal with the British. And that's really where this story begins. Um, Britain's victory in the war actually created many problems that could not be foreseen ahead of time. Um, as I just mentioned, the natives who sided with the French were extremely angry and hostile. Uh, the French had treated them with respect. They had very difficult relations with the British. And um, to say they were um, not exactly welcoming towards uh, British settlers moving west across the mountains would be an understatement. So to protect settlers, um, the British actually created a proclamation line of 1763. Uh, and basically this proclamation said, uh, you have to stay on the eastern side of the mountains and we're going to uh, allow the natives to stay on their side of the mountains and not allow any new settlements in those areas. Um, this was controversial to say the least because from the perspective of the 13 colonies, the entire point of the war was to clear the French out so that the members of the 13 colonies could start moving west and laying claim to that land. So all of a sudden the King of England has come along and said, nope, we're going to draw a line and you need to stay on your side of the line. So... Um, chalk this up as strike one in terms of uh, tension between the colonists and the King of England. Um, as I just stated, the colonists resented this because they did think the entire point of the French Indian War was to allow them to move west and settle on those lands. Uh, and as it stood, if you look at this arrow right here, all of this pink land basically was set aside for the Native Americans and not for the settlers. So um, that was, as they say, a thing. 
we're going to work on the same left side question here there's a lot of cause and effect relationships here um, before the war you have to keep in mind that the british more or less let the colonies run themselves they didn't really interfere with the colonies very much as long as the colonies sent back raw materials to britain so that they could make finished goods um, the british were pretty happy but after the french and indian war that changed and it changed in a big way uh, one of the ways it changed is that britain went into a lot of debt after the war um, war costs money you have to spend a lot of money to buy the military equipment and pay the soldiers and do everything you need to do to win a war and when the war was over they they wanted the colonists to actually help them pay for it and from the british point of view they're like we fought the war for you um, we fought the war so that you could eventually move west across the mountains and uh, since we did that for you and we were successful we want you to pitch in a little bit so it sounds reasonable when i put it that way uh, the colonists did not exactly consider it reasonable before the war they'd more or less run their own affairs and the british didn't in interfere very much like i said before so all of a sudden the british are drawing proclamation lines and starting to ask the colonists to pay for the war um, this was a complete change and um, the colonists were not very receptive to that change so a series of taxes were passed on the colonists that made them very angry and these taxes were passed by the british parliament nobody in the 13 colonies had any say in the passage of these taxes and so you know a proclamation came across the ocean says that too bad so sad colonists you now owe these taxes that you never had to pay before and uh, let's just say uh, the colonists were less than pleased so because the colonists had no say in these taxes and they had no representation or vote in the British Parliament that gave them a voice in whether the taxes were or were not imposed um, things became a little salty shall we say so this here is not something I expect you to write in your notes but I am going to summarize for you some of the taxes that were passed by the British and what happened as a result of those taxes uh, what you're looking at here occurred over the course of you know three to five years um, so keep that in mind this didn't all happen at once uh, and this does not include all of the taxes or actions that the British took these are just the most significant ones uh, the first thing is the British passed the famous Stamp Act that was passed by Prime Minister Grenville. Now keep in mind, the colonists blamed King George III, but Britain did have a parliament at that point. They did elect their government. And so um, the colonists being angry at the king was kind of misplaced anger. They were mad at the different governments in Britain. In 1763, this required the colonists to buy a stamp for each piece of paper they used. And this include wills licenses and even playing cards so you had to have an official stamp on those kinds of documents or you weren't allowed to use those documents so that wasn't terribly popular and so the colonists felt that this was like i said before taxation without representation many sent letters of complaint to the british uh, many simply started boycotting anything that required the stamp and because they started boycotting anything that required the stamp the British were not making the money that they wanted to make from the Stamp Act and eventually the government withdrew or repealed notice the vocabulary word the Stamp Act um, because the boycott was affected you know a boycott works if it causes the company or the organization that you're boycotting to change their behavior and in this case the British changed their behavior then there was the quartering act um, in 1765 passed a law requiring colonists to pay the costs of having British soldiers in the colonies uh, this was considered a backdoor tax uh, because the British had lots of troops in the colonies uh, 
uh, instead of paying for them with money raised from the British, um, they wanted to pay for them with money raised off of the colonists. And the colonists started to see this as you're asking us to pay for an occupying force. You're asking us to pay for troops that you're basically using to keep us under control. So um, they weren't too happy about that. And many of the colonies themselves, uh, the legislatures of the different colonies, refused to allocate the money needed for the troops. So the, the governments of the different colonies didn't put out the money they were supposed to under this law passed in Britain. Um, another word for that is nullification, but that's actually on the next vocabulary list. So we're not going to talk about that right now. Uh, after Prime Minister Grenville, the next Prime Minister was uh, Mr. Townsend. Uh, he replaced the Stamp Act with the Townsend Act, was basically a series of taxes on British imports. Uh, An import was not one of our vocabulary words, but it's a word that it's important for you to know. When you're importing something, it means you're bringing it in from outside the country. So basically anything that came into the colonies from Britain got taxed. So basically the colonists organized, and this is a term you're going to want to know for the test, committees of correspondence, which were basically groups of people who would watch their neighbors and make sure that their neighbors were not buying anything that was made in Britain. So the colonists started making their own clothes instead of buying finished clothes from Britain. They boycotted British goods. And if they saw anyone buying British goods, they actually harassed and intimidated them to comply. Uh, they would actually, if they saw you buying British goods, they would hunt you down at night in the street, cover you with tar, and attach feathers to your body. It was called being tarred and feathered. I'm surprised middle school students haven't thought of that. But um, it was not something you wanted to happen to you, and it had the effect of making you not want to buy British goods, even if you otherwise would have done so. So... Uh, there was a new prime minister after Mr. Townsend, Lord North, and he repealed the Townsend Acts in short order because the boycott was effective. The British were not able to make it. We just went dark for a second there. So this is a summary of the events that led the colonists to become less than pleased with the British. Before the French and Indian War, relations between the colonies and Brit British were very good. After the French and Indian War, things took a turn. In this lesson, we basically looked at what that turn was. With that, ladies and gentlemen, you know what time it is. It is time to write yet another summary of what you learned in today's lesson. And once again, if I have time, I'm going to show a John Green crash course video uh, that is going to help you to understand these events in even more detail than I've explained them. Um, some of you are cool with the detail I've given you. Some of you may actually want to know more. And uh, this video is a fantastic way for you to know more. But until then, ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for you to write your summary, and it is time for me to sign off once again on the Waldo Middle School Social Studies YouTube Network.